You're right. I mean, I sometimes also am reluctant to use this word, the truth, or truth lovers, or residual ignorance, or... And at other times I'm not reluctant because I feel they really are pointing towards something that we can't know with the mind, with touch, with the body, but that we nevertheless know. From, a, from itself. It knows itself. But as soon as we use language, in a way we can't help but make it some kind of an object. But in this context, we're, we talk about it for pedagogical reasons. We create a kind of stepping stone for the mind or for the body back to its true nature, or whatever we want to call it. We, we walk ourselves back uh, from what we <coughs> feel or think ourselves to be, with, but with the intuition that that can't be right. So I can't be just this limited, separate self. There must be more. What am I? You know, we start with this question. So if there's a question, there's an answer somehow. But we could remain with a question. And just to remain with a question, for example, when we explore the body, just to really welcome the body, to really just welcome the body at some point. There's a moment where the object and the subject, the, the listening and the, the listened to and the listener merge into listening. And that doesn't need to be named. It's an experience that happens. And that then leaves an echo of love or an echo of something, which of course, naturally, we might want to put into words. You know, that's why mystics wrote poetry and sages dispense teachings, because that's what we do as humans. So I think in your, you're right, like you're right, but at the same time, don't shortchange yourself. Don't throw away the baby with the bathwater. Don't, you know, there is a, a definite uh, value to using language and, and, and mm -hmm. formulations, mm -hmm. but always in the knowledge that they're just that. You're onto something too, because in the Tantric tradition, which is different than the Advaita tradition in a way, they don't name consciousness or the absolute. They just are with experience moment by moment, with the not knowing. And it's the not knowing somehow that dissolves the sense of separation. I think we, we, we I think on some level there's you agree, we agree. But semantically it's it's a different you know, for you you don't like language that points to a absolute. It it's it, it's it, it jars with your agnostic In some ways self. Does, yeah. But just hang, you know, there's you don't need to adhere to any of this language. But just don't I mean, from my point of view, just make sure you don't use that as as a as a way don't shortchange yourself. Keep exploring. Even give it, give, give it a chance. Give yourself a chance to, for example, ask, ask the question, what is it that is aware of my experience right this moment? And take yourself on that path, which of course will require the use of language, but nevertheless is very experiential. But well, once you let go of anything, not just language, anything, the body, sensations, feelings, so, so why just, in other words, not just language or thoughts? I think we have to be careful not to mistrust language and thoughts. They're just as potential expressions and pointers than anything else. Oh, you mean the bottom line is to end suffering? Yeah. But you're right. The bottom line is totally to end suffering. Suffering yeah. is the belief that I am a separate self. That is suffering. It takes many forms, but at, at the root of any suffering is the belief <coughs> I am separate, mm -hmm. I am a fragment, I am isolated. And that, that, so suffering and the separate self, they're one and the same thing. Sure, the yeah. ego is suffering. So absolutely, the bottom line is this intuition that, or this longing to, 
to end suffering, which means to end the separate self, which yeah. does, does somehow pave the way to the possibility that there is another self. When you say I, not that I know, who, which I are you referring to? Well, yeah, all that. I mean, no, I'm just asking, don't, don't rush. I don't know. I guess I'm probably meaning the uh, separate self. Well, it's a valid question to ask yourself. Because you're right, the separate self, the mind, can never know yeah. its origin. Yeah. It can only die in it, as Rupert says, or others. The body can never touch, in a way, its source. It can only kind of dissolve in it. But then, but hold on, but then the, the mind, having, having dissolved and having reached the limits of its own capacity to know and having, like a moth to the flame, having died to having dissolved back into the source, having traced itself back to its origin, and then somehow reaching its limit, dying, dissolving. And at that moment, there's a moment of understanding. Those are moments of aha that we get. And then the mind rises out, that out of those moments of understanding, a thought comes, a formulation, an understanding comes, arises to express because that's just the natural, that's how it works. Or a movement of love or humor. That's like the echo of the body-mind having returned to its source and then rising up again. But actually the bottom line is not... I said earlier that it was... the bottom line was about the relief, the relief of suffering, but it's not really that. It's, the relief of suffering is a byproduct. The bottom line is discovering the true I. Yeah. 